Hey guys, welcome back. It is your favorite Gimp of the Lump. We're going to jump back in and play a little bit more of a a Arnhem, uh, Operation Market Garden here. Uh, jumping right back into where we left off, I did have someone point out I missed a modifier here. We're not going to worry about going back. I don't think it made a, a difference anyway. Uh, but when you're defending, you get a modifier of one, depending on what terrain you're in. Uh, that can be easily missed since it's up here in the corner. It doesn't stand out too well. And I wasn't looking there. I was looking on the terrain effects chart on the map. So, yeah, it is what it is. Now, something else that's key is for the Germans, they want to hold the bridges, right? So they, they want to prevent the allies from capturing and holding the bridges. Now, some of these are pre-wired. So the ones you see marked here, these like train looking ones or canal looking ones, any of those bridges are automatically wired across the entirety of the map. And anytime an allied unit goes to cross it, you have to roll a die and on a one or two, it is blown up flat out. Engineers can attempt to repair it. Uh, but they have to be there. They have to sit there the entire German turn, try to repair them. So that can cause uh, movement problems. But for the Allies, it's not as much taking and controlling the bridges. Now, I guess that's what they do want to do. But it's about getting guys on this side of the map. They get points for getting units across this river. And they get even more points, big points, for getting units across this river. So the Germans want to blow up those bridges just to keep the allies from coming across. So at the end of the game, the Germans are going to get points for killing allies, for keeping them past these two rivers, like keeping them in that direction, and also for having them be out of supply. So, you know, cut off, surrounded, uh, unable to trace uh, lines of supply is going to hurt them as well. So the Germans have multiple ways to actually gain points. The Allies do have their work cut out for them in this one. And just to show you, these little markers here, focus in, are the ones I was talking about. They say down. So you'll put those little markers on the map, on these little bridges, if they blow up. If they don't, though, so you roll your die, you don't get a one or two, it's up for the rest of the game. You do not have to continue rolling if it doesn't blow that first time. And no German unit has to be there. Any ally unit goes to go across, it's just presuppose, predetermined that some German guy is sitting there waiting to, you know, clack it off uh, as the allies try to pot, uh, pass over the bridge. Now, when we left off, the allies had gone. I had to reorganize my board again because I have cats. And any of you who have cats are going to understand my pain. It is what it is. Uh, but we have the Germans to go, and then we're going to kick into round two. And the Germans over here kind of cut off. There's SS guys up over there that we'll do something with. And these guys, I kind of want to just get them together. Now, this major road here is one half movement point, I believe, for them to move across. Yeah. So infantry have seven movement points. He's right here on a trail. Trails, I believe, are one. So I kind of want to get him and this one together, bunch them up, and then come down after these British guys. So if he goes one, two, three, four, there he's picking up on the road. He can go four and a half, five, six. Yeah, he can get to the city. It might actually be better to go to the woods. So we're going to... Take this German one, he can run all the way. So both of them are on major roads or trails. Gives them plenty of movement points to come over here. And yes, I know I'm moving them away from the combat, but I'm getting them bunched up together so they've got a little more, a little more oomph, a little more power. That way they can come back later and they can try to pincer off these British guys. Or if anything else, just kind of keep their attention focused so the British can't throw all their weight that way. There's a couple of guys back here that can uh, mess with their supply lines. All right, I had to grab out my damn tweezers. This map is, is so big, I'm leaning across the entirety of it. All right, we've got one armor up here. We've got one SS infantry. We've got one recon, and we have one very nice 88 mil flat gun. Those things are beautiful, the amount of damage they can put out. 
seven hex range to attack aircraft, to attack uh, enemy units, armor, anything. Plus, unlike other types of artillery, if they get attacked directly, their defensive value doesn't drop to one. They stay at a three. They're powerful up close. They're powerful at a distance. They're just powerful all the way around. Plus, they get to shoot at every aircraft within its range. So you count seven hexes out from one of these uh, 88 guns in every direction. And any allied air unit within those seven hexes, he gets to fire at. Those things are just beastly. I think we want to do the same thing I was doing over here. I kind of want to bunch the guys up, get a nice doom stack coming, and then start coming up here to apply pressure to the British in their little landing zone there. So we're probably gonna use this turn to move them up. All right, so here we are, we got them moved. Took me a sec to check. I wanted to double check just to make sure that uh, these guys could go all in the same hex. And to show you, that is the German recon, right? So you can see it's got the little, little tires on it. So it's not the half track that's shown. That's their recon, I do believe, because the only other unit they have is their half track, which is their mechanized. So I think the half track that's shown as recon is actually the US recon. Uh, but regardless, we have armor, we have infantry, uh, we have recon, which are allowed to stack with them. Basically, you can have four units total, uh, one armor, one artillery, and two of a combination of infantry, recon, mechanized. All right, so two of any of those three items uh, can be in there. So we do fit here. Now, I double checked it. You guys can let me know if I'm wrong but I could not find anything that said that artillery could not bombard in the same turn that they move. So there's really no reason for me not to do a bombard with this 88 mil. It says you can do it with uh, or any artillery, any type of artillery, and I think this counts. So there are these little markers that say fired and ready on either side you can use to annotate whether or not a artillery unit has fired because that does come into play. If you do like a bombard, then you can't also be used offensively, but the artillery can always be used defensively. Now for us, we're gonna do a bombard with him. So I'm working him as fired because he is, and he is going to target this hex that has two infantry in it. Now the thing is he doesn't get his uh, full power. He only bombards at a combat vector of two. So it's two plus a die roll, and then it's just compared on this little chart and the other combat board, just like you would do any other type of combat. But there is one other thing, and this is something I wish they put on a card or something so it wasn't in the rule book. It's a bombardment table, and this comes into play when you do aircraft or if you do um, uh, artillery bombardment. Either of those will cause this to come into play. So there is a negative one being applied because the targets are in woods broken or rough. They are in rough. So a negative one is being applied. So basically they're getting a combat factor of one plus whatever the die roll is. All right, so I threw down our little board here with the, uh, the symbol for it. We'll mark down how many hits we get and they don't get to retreat. So they can't use a retreat and a bombardment to absorb any of the hits. Any hits that come through, one, two, whatever, doesn't matter. They have to absorb as step losses. So we got four, which plus their one is going to be a no hit. So no result from that bombardment. Not a whole lot going through. We need more artillery. We need more power to be able to punch through on these guys. But hey, it's the chance you might be able to get a little, little softening hit in on. Oh, and I just noticed that the, the rough actually made the difference. That knocked them down by one, just enough to make it to where they could not get the hit through. Oh, well, and that works for us. All right, so here we are at the top of the table. we got two infantry here, and there's not a whole lot that can be done with these guys. 
So I think we're going to stick with our plan of trying to circle them around. And I just realized there's a bridge there that the allies, if they try to cross, that's going to get blown up or attempt to get blown up. That can cause problems because look, bridge, bridge, couple bridges over there. And I think I crossed a bridge over here. I need to check that one. I'll, I'll do that on the, uh, the next turn. Yeah, because the, the drop zone was there. No, those guys dropped it. I'll have to check the camera after, so I'll probably adjust that on the uh, the next video. But I can't remember if those guys dropped on that side or this side of it because the DZ's there and they could have dropped all the way around there. So that could be an issue. They might have crossed that bridge. But there's two bridges here, a couple over there. There are going to be issues. Now let's do this. One half, one, one and a half, two... Three. Yeah, we'll just go there. We're gonna bunch them up here. Now they can trace line and side around, but I, I can control the road here. One little choke point right here in the village. This is a good spot. It's gonna force the airborne to push out and have to come try to take this hex back. All right, so I went ahead and pulled out to a wide angle of the board because we're gonna start turn two. And there's a, a fair bit that's going on now that wasn't going on during the, the first turn. So I'm going to slow it back down just a little bit so we can touch on those parts of the game that I did not get to show previously. Uh, that's car draw, uh, air phase, and then uh, air supply phase, which I think the air supply phase doesn't actually kick in until turn three. But air combat does start kicking in now. All right, so first for the car draw phase. Normally for each deck of cards, you would draw five cards for each person's hand and you'd be able to play them out throughout the course of the, the turn. Here's the thing though, since I'm playing heads, not heads up, but solitaire, I, I can't really control both sides, not really in a fair manner. So with card draws, I like to just leave that up to fate. So what I am going to do rather than doing the five and wasting a whole lot of time on the cards, each turn, I'm simply going to draw one card for each faction, and that is going to be the card that they'll have available for that turn, whether or not they use it. So for the allies, we get a determined defense, uh, can re-roll one combat die for one defensive combat and pick the best result of the two. All right, cool. That works. And for the Germans, uh, they got some 20 mil flak. Great. We start aircraft and they get an aircraft defensive card. Uh, during this uh, air phase or airborne supply phase, hit an aircraft with an eligible unit, play at the instant of failed AA roll. So it gives them a chance uh, to try AA again. I don't know why. My camera's giving me hell when I try to get closer. I'm going to have to readjust it or something. But anyway, we've got our aircraft. We have to roll to see who's going to get what. So we are going to roll on our little chart here to determine uh, what aircraft we're getting. And uh, please forgive my camera. I don't know what the hell it's doing at the moment. It keeps flicking between different shots for some reason. All right, so I think I got my camera fixed. Someone uh, had fiddled with my settings, so I think we're good now. We're going to go ahead and roll and see who's going to get what. We'll roll for the allies. And they got a six. So that's working really well for them. And now we'll go ahead and roll for the Germans. What are they going to get? They got a three. Three is a single fighter for the Germans. And for the Americans, the Americans actually got a lot. Let me grab these out. Oh, and I forgot to mention there are new troops all over the board. I forgot to, uh, to bring that up. Uh, on top of our new aircraft, I went ahead and set out the reinforcements. Let me go ahead and show you guys those real quick. All right, so up here at the top of the board where the Americans get their supplies, uh, they had a bunch of reinforcements come in. A couple of infantry, a armor, a engineering unit, which is effectively mechanized, and a self-propelled artillery. So these infantry are not in a good spot. Now they are actually surrounded by airborne and some incoming forces, so they're in for a world of hurt. Way down here at the far end of the map, we just had two uh, German units come in. They have one mechanized and one armored unit. These are the guys that are getting ready to come up in this direction where the airborne are all in the center, right? So this is where I think uh, the 101st 
all of those guys landed. They don't really have any opposition, but now they have some stuff, some armor and some mechanized that are moving their direction, but there is more to come. Way up here on this side of the board where the British had their landings, they got a whole bunch of more infantry added, plus another of the airborne artillery pieces. There's still this clump of Germans here holding Arnhem, and there is one tiny new little infantry guy coming in here to try to assist. The Germans don't get their big reinforcement until turn three. So that's when we'll see them get a push. But right now, the uh, the British have this just huge knot of guys here holding, uh, holding place. And honestly, that's a lot of victory points for those guys being there. So the Germans really need to push them back. All right, so here's where we're going to start first. Outside of the small little town of Renham, the two German infantry that are located here, they are in woods, so they will get that bombardment bonus. Remember, the bombardment applies to both artillery and aircraft, attacking aircraft. For the Allies, I divided the aircraft in half, one bomber and two fighters attacking two separate locations. The German fighter went after the other location, so we'll have air-to-air -air combat there. We're not going to have it here. Now, what they're going to do is it's just like the bombardment. You're going to add up your, your factors, right? And then that bombardment table is going to come into play, apply a modifier, and then it gets uh, put here to see how many hits. And they can't retreat. They got to take the damage. So that's why aircraft can do really well. And the Americans definitely have the advantage in the aircraft department uh, during this uh, game. They get a lot more aircraft than the Germans do. So... The Germans, though, do have built-in AA. Any non-airborne unit considers to have in uh, built-in AA. They get to roll a die for each unit. And I think it's a roll of a one. Yeah, we're going to say roll of a one because I think it's a one. On a roll of a one, they destroy an attacking aircraft, right? That is just for units like armor and infantry and stuff like that. If it's an 88 or uh, an anti-aircraft weapon, they get to roll with their inherent stats. They have a much better chance of taking out uh, aircraft. But for your just regular units, they still have a chance of potentially taking out some of the attacking aircraft. Yep, I checked it. It is a one. And it's the targeted hex plus any units in the surrounding hexes. Can fire. So if there were other Germans or if this like infantry way up here were down adjacent to this town already, then he could contribute as well and they get an extra die to roll. All right, so let's roll for them and see what they get. And now they're rolling high. So they did not get any ones. Now we are going to do the total of the combat factor. Bombers are three. Fighters count as one when they're attacking the ground. So this is a total of five plus whatever I get on the die. Sadly, I am getting the minus one. So it's only a four plus whatever I get on the die. So as long as I get a two or better, I am going to cause at least one hit. And if I get a six, I'm going to get two hits. So let's roll for that big, beautiful bean footage. They got a four. Let's see, a four plus uh, what I say they were getting. The five, that would give them nine, but they're losing the one, doesn't matter. They are still doing a single point of damage. So one of the Germans is going to lose a Rondell. Not the worst, but hey, we were able to cause some damage and that's a good thing. All right, forgive my stretched out camera, but uh, this map is big, just like I told you guys. It's big and beautiful, but you gotta stretch across it. All right, we've got our two German units. This is the one at the periphery. That's the one I'm trying to target, but there is one German fighter that we have to talk uh, to target and take care of first. So there is air combat. And that it's simply rolling. Each side rolls a die and highest die wins. All right, now, even though the Americans have two fighters, they don't get to roll an extra die. It, you just keep rolling until one side has no fighters left. So each side rolls a D6, higher side wins, the losing side has to lose a fighter. And in that respect, uh, a side that had one fighter versus like five could even come out on top. They could actually win the air to air combat uh, in a situation like that. So we'll roll for it. I'm doing this right here to the side of the camera. We'll do the dark green as the Americans in this 
uh, frosted color as the Germans. And yeah, that one went to the Americans. The Americans are rolling well. They got a six to the Germans four. Germans will lose their aircraft. And now we're just going to do the bombardment just like we had done previously. So, oh, we do not get the negative one though. We do not get the negative one because they are in mixed terrain. So now it's just a flat out. We have a better chance of scoring two hits here. All right, so let's roll for it and see what we're gonna get. No, single point of damage. They only got a two, which is gonna put them in the one hit category. And we're definitely not gonna take that on armor. We'll take that on the mechanized because the mechanized is not quite as good. So we were able to cause some uh, armored damage to them though. Their mechanized infantry did take some damage and that is all she wrote for our aircraft. That's it. Nothing else to do once they get done with their little airstrikes. All right, so I panned the map or the camera way back again and, and still you guys can see how big this map is because even with the view all the way down to here, uh, you still can't even see the 82nd Airborne and all the, the British troops that are coming in from the reinforcement zone. This just has the 101st over here and the British paratroopers uh, or paratroops over there and then Arnhem way up there in the corner. Man, this map is just big. It just, uh, I'll tell you, I keep saying it over and over again, but it just looks so cool when it's laid out on the table and you've got all the little minis moving across it. It just looks cooler than hell, man. All right, now, if this were turn three, we go into the airdrop phase where we would try to drop in supplies to the uh, artillery pieces for the airborne units. We do not have to worry about that. This time though, that starts in turn three, but in that phase as well, the Germans get a chance to try to shoot those aircraft if they're within range. There's none here, no AA in range to go after this resupply, but if I try to resupply the British way up over here, uh, they might be able to get some shots in from that 88. That's part of the reason I didn't go after that. I thought about hitting them with all the aircraft, but there's just so much there. There was so much AA to get through. Just the inherent units themselves, plus an 88 mil flat cannon, they could fire at every aircraft. <laughs> I was like, screw that. No, we're not, we're not going to go after that thing. We're going to avoid that thing like the plague. All right, so... We're going to pick back up. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to end it here. We're going to pick back up on the next video uh, with the American's turn. And I'm kind of thinking about it that I'm going to take the 101st here and just try to move them across that wall, river, wall, wa, wa, whatever the, the Germans call it. Wall, is that how it is? Yeah, W-A-A-L. But this river running right along through here, because that's that's victory points. And if I can just get them across, there's that one key bridge right there, right? Get them across that and just kind of hold there. Not even do anything, just secure the damn position and wait. That's victory points, right? It's not as many, but it's victory points. And I got a feeling that the British way up there at the top of the screen are not going to handle as well because while there's a bunch of infantry there, they can be picked off from a distance because they're getting ready to have a fair amount of artillery pieces near them once the Germans reinforce heavily on the next turn. But I get points with each one of those guys that's still around. So protecting them is a good idea. Oh, and I wanted to zoom in the camera and show something here real quick. This is a, a close in shot of the map. I had someone who was uh, commenting on it, the fact that the, the hexes seemed a little hard to see. And honestly, I don't think that they're hard to see for, for game purposes. I think they stand out at the right level. They are there enough that you can see them. But when you step back a little bit, you, you mostly just see the map. Right? You, you don't feel like you're looking at a hex grid. You feel like you're looking at, you know, a topographical map. But when you get in a little bit closer, like, you know, like here, you can see that's definitely a hex, you know, that type of stuff. And they did that by having the middle of the lines fade out a little bit. It's almost completely gone right there in the center when they're drawing out those hexes. But those corners stand out so brightly against the map uh, that it's really not an issue. But anyway, that's going to be it for me on this one. You guys stay tuned. I will be back with some more ANA 
Barnum Operation Market Garden very soon because I have been having a blast with this one. I'll tell you, it is a lot of fun. All right, y'all take care. I'll catch you in the next one.